The Christian life was never meant to be complicated. Jesus died. He said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Jesus died so we could live beautiful, simple, enjoyable lives. No matter how many years of disappointment you've had, today I'm encouraging you to say, something good is going to happen to me. Something good is going to happen to me. Amen? I, my life is not going to stay this way because God is good and God is faithful, and I've got a breakthrough coming. It's right around the corner. I'm going to get a suddenly... Amen. Amen. I told the people I hurt my back about seven weeks ago, and that's one of the reasons why I'm in the chair some, but I've kind of decided I like this chair. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I think I've spent enough time running around up here on these hard platforms and going home with sore feet and sore back, so this is going to be a permanent fixture. <laughs> Amen. My gift is not in me walking around. It's in my mouth. Told them Thursday night they could wheel me out here in a bed and I can still preach. <laughs> but anyway, you know, it's, it's been very painful. And I mean, I've had like cortisone shots in my back and all kinds of stuff. And it's just not been a fun ordeal. I mean, I can actually say that it's the worst long-term pain that I've ever had in my whole life. Now, the good news is, is it's a whole lot better than it was couple of weeks ago. Well, you know, I'm telling you this to say that anytime that you have a long-term situation, your mind wants to start caving in and say, oh my God, what if I stay this way? But see, I refuse to believe that because I know that God is good. I know that God is faithful. And to be honest, if I was in the situation today that I was three weeks ago, I don't know if I could do this. So God's been faithful just in getting me good enough to be able to do what I need to do. And I believe with all my heart that by next week I'm going to be even better. And by next week I'm going to be even better. And by next week I'm going to be even better. And I just think it's good for you to know that I'm not just preaching something to you. But I live these things. We also go through things and we get tested and tried just like everybody else does. And you can still be happy. You know, one of the things that I've so appreciated during this difficult time is in these seven weeks there's only been twice that I've gotten really kind of down the rest of the time God has kept me with a good attitude and a hopeful attitude and you know even that is a gift from God when you can have something long term going on in your life and yet God keeps you hopeful and you just know that you know that you know that whatever God does there's going to be an answer amen and I know the time will come when I won't even, you know, hardly remember this. And I'll tell you one thing that difficulty does do for you. It helps you have compassion for other people. And don't think when you're hurting that you can't help somebody else because I'm proving to you that I can sit here and help you even while I'm waiting on a breakthrough from God myself. And we, we had a girl at our office that had had a surgery and she'd been back to the hospital two or three times and she was just in horrible, horrible, horrible pain and they couldn't find out what it was. And a couple of weeks ago, I prayed with her on the phone and I said, this is what we're gonna believe. We're gonna believe that in the morning, you're going to be a lot better and within 24 hours, you are gonna be well. And I'm telling you, that is exactly what happened. And when I prayed for her, I was doing well to walk. How many of you are understanding where I'm at today? Amen. So, you know, being a Christian is not all about just having everything perfectly the way you'd like it all the time. It's about trusting God in the storm. You know, there's a beginning of a journey. There's the end of a journey. But, oh, my gosh, what about the middle? How many of you are in the middle right now? You're somewhere in the middle of your journey. And you know, in the middle, there's very often a lot of storms. And some of those storms are people mistreating you or people coming against you or, you know, and how we handle those things 
are extremely important. So I'm encouraging you that no matter what is going on in your life and no matter how long it has gone on, you need to just say, I believe that something good is going to happen to me. My breakthrough is right around, and I mean refuse to give it up. Just flat out refuse to let the devil have your hope. Make hope a habit and say, I refuse to give up my hope. Amen? Little children don't have any trouble believing. You say, Saturday I'm going to get you a new bike. Is it Saturday yet? Is it Saturday yet? Is it Saturday yet? I mean, how would you feel as a parent if your child came to you and said, well, I don't believe on Saturday you're going to get me a bike. I don't feel like I'm going to get a bike. I don't have a bike. I don't look like a bike. Let's look at Mark 11, 24. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, now watch, believe, trust and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. Come on, we got to stay. Believe that it is granted to you, and then you will get it. Believe that it is granted to you, and you will get it. Believe that it is granted to you, and you will get it. In God's economy, in kingdom principles, you always have to believe first and see later. That's why it's very scripturally appropriate to say, even while you're still broke, I'm prosperous. Even while you're still hurting, I'm healed. Even while there's all kinds of stuff going on in your home, I live in the midst of peace and I have the most peaceful life that you can ever imagine. Because all of those things are true in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, that's what belongs to you as a child of God, as someone who is in Christ. Yeah. Ephesians 1, 3 says, in Christ, we are given every spiritual blessing that exists in the heavenly realm. So everybody say, I'm blessed. All right, and then the Bible talks about believing, and it says those who have believed do enter the rest of God. For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him. <laughs> you say, well, I wish I could believe. No, you can decide to believe. You've decided not to believe, so why can't you decide to believe? That's just like you can smile if you want to. You can frown if you want to. All right. Little children really are not complicated. They don't live their life trying to impress anyone. Now, I told you the other night about how I could complicate what started out to be a simple, little simple party, a little simple barbecue. Say after church on Sunday, hey, guys, why don't, you know, maybe just to two couples stand there talking hey, why don't you guys come over next Sunday after church and we'll do some hot dogs and burgers and get some chips and I'll make some iced tea and we'll just sit around and fellowship. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, that was good. We can tell that that's, that's simple. That's easy. That's good. But in a week, I could turn it into such a complicated, unbelievable mess The hot dogs and hamburgers turned into steaks that I couldn't afford. <laughs> and I'd be mad at Dave all week because he was enjoying his life and not helping me get ready for this party. <laughs> we had to plant flowers along the patio and paint the barbecue pit and <laughs> wax all the floors. And I mean, I'm telling you the truth, by the time the people got there, I didn't even like them. I'd be almost mad at them because I had to do all this work to get ready for them. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Did you know what all that was really about? It was about me trying to impress somebody.
I wanted to impress them. I worried about what they would think. So therefore, I did things I really couldn't afford to do and things I didn't even want to do. The result was I had a miserable week. And the answer was I needed to simplify my approach. Now, some of you can get a lot of the stress out of your life. I mean, you can go home and have one meeting with yourself. You can go home and have one one-hour meeting with yourself. And you can get a lot of the stress out of your life just by deciding to simplify some things. For one thing, you ought to go home and clean the clutter out of your house. You get rid of it if you don't need it. You get rid of it if you're not using it. <laughs> you need to get rid of some stuff. Keep the stuff you love. Keep the stuff that you use. Don't keep a bunch of stuff in case you need it someday. Because <laughs> when you do need it, you won't know where it's at. I mean, that's the truth. And I finally just thought, you know what, I ain't keeping this because by the time I need it, I won't know where it's at. And then I'll get frustrated because I know it's here and can't find it. So I'm just going to give it to somebody else right now and trust God when I need another one, it'll be there. <laughs> keep what you need, keep what you love. Keep what you enjoy. You know, my barbecue thing, I was, I was a lot like the Mary Martha thing, only Dave was Mary and I was Martha. You know, Jesus stopped by their house and Martha got overwrought trying to clean things up and impressed Jesus. And then she got mad at Mary because Mary wasn't helping her. And she went to Jesus. She said, well, don't you care that my sister's left me to do all the work? And Jesus looked at her and said, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. And he didn't tell her to stop working. He told her to stop worrying. Work is good. It's the worrying that overloads us. And then he said, Mary hath chosen the better part. See, when you let your work schedule control you and manipulate you, you're always going to miss the miracle of the moment. Because there may be some little simple something going on right then that you could enjoy if you would just take the time to do it. Another way you can simplify your life is by keeping one thing on your mind at a time and giving yourself to what you're actually trying to do. You know, multitasking is like really popular in our society, but I don't think it's too popular with God. Because Ecclesiastes says, keep your footing, give your mind to what you're doing. Another thing that you can do, and I believe children are experts at this, is you can enjoy where you're at on the way to where you're going. Because wherever you think you're headed for, when you get there, then you'll be headed somewhere else. Oh, I know. I mean, I used to think, oh, God, if I could just have a thousand people in my meetings. If just a thousand people would come. And I remember a pastor telling me, you won't be satisfied. <laughs> then you'll want two, and then three, and then four, and then five. And, you know, really, man does not live by that stuff. He doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God things and more things and more and more things and more and more money and more and more and more and more has no ability to make you happy. It's the greatest deception out there. So we keep getting more and more and more and going in debt to have it and then we're pressured by all the debt and all we're trying to do is impress other people and impress ourselves and then we get so much of it that it aggravates us we can't even clean our house anymore because of all the stuff. Come on. You know, when I was a teenager, I never got confused about what to wear. My closet was like this. I mean, that was, you know, it wasn't a room. It was like this. And I had seven outfits. Monday, you wore this one. Tuesday, you wore that one. Wednesday, you wore this one. 
And I think it was even probably simpler back in the Bible days because all their stuff looked exactly alike. <laughs> but how many of you ladies have actually gotten confused in your closet trying to figure out what to wear on any given day? <laughs> change your clothes four. Anybody ever change their clothes? Three times. <laughs> More than we, you know. You know, the Bible says, be anxious for nothing. Now listen, be anxious for nothing. But in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace that passes understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. If you want something, ask God for it. If it's right, know that he'll give it to you. If it's not, you better pray he don't give it to you. He'll give it to you in his time when he's good and ready, and you need to trust that too. And in the meantime, while you're waiting for God to come through with whatever it is you think you want and need, you need to remember to be very grateful for what you have. You know, as human beings, and I fall into this too, as human beings, we are so bad at not being really, 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 it's like we are so blessed that we don't even see it. We really just don't even see it. And this morning, I think God was just doing a little workshop with me, helping get me ready for this. But I just thought, I'm going to pay attention to the best of my ability. I'm going to pay attention and make a big deal out of every little blessing that I have. You know, we make a big deal out of the wrong stuff. Hello. Well, you hurt my feelings. Well, me, 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 me. You know, for example, this morning, Dave came in and gave me a little kiss where I was sitting, kissed me on the cheek, and, you know, he smelled really good. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I thought, oh, God, I'm grateful that I'm not married to a man that stinks. I mean, I'm just really pretty determined to try to give the devil a nervous breakdown. <laughs> I mean, did you ever thank God that your husband didn't stink? I thought that was kind of cool. <laughs> and I even told him, I said, mm, you smell good. And, you know, Dave, Dave gets himself cleaned up every day, and that's important to me. I mean, that's just, I, Dave still pretty much looks like he did when we got married, except he's a little bit older, but, you know, he's, he takes good care of himself, and I appreciate that. You know what? We don't make a big enough deal out of little things in our life. And I really think it would add a lot to our lives if we would do that. You know what? Little kids do that. Little kids just think it's the greatest thing in the world if just some little something happens to them. You know, we have four children, and I, I'm so blessed. You know, most days I talk to all four of my children. And if I don't talk to them, we text back and forth. They all still live in the same city where we do, and we all have great relationships. They're all saved and walking with God. And, you know, what a blessing that is! What a blessing! And you know, there are people who don't have that. Like there might be one person here today that's just thinking, well, if I just had more money, I just need more money. I don't have enough money. But maybe you've got kids that you're real close to and you love them and you, you know, you have good relationship with them. And there might be somebody else sitting in this same building today that, now remember, you, you have money, but maybe you're thinking, well, you know, I just wish that I had a better relationship with my kids. My kids don't even care anything about me, and they've all left town, and I never see them, and I never hear from them. So you got the money, but you don't have the relationships. And then you got somebody else over here that has maybe four great kids that love them, and they hear from them all the time, and yet they're thinking, well, I, if I just had more money, then I'd be happy. So, you know, the bottom line is, is if you don't decide to be happy, you're not ever going to be happy. I don't care what you have.
And I'm asking you today to simplify your life on purpose by deciding to look at what you do have and not what you don't have. You know, even some of the days when my back was bothering me, I would purposely think, I'm grateful I can see, I can hear, I don't have a headache, nothing else hurts. I I've only got this one little spot that hurts. Everything else feels good. Hallelujah. Amen. But we focus on and fixate on what we don't have, and then we lose sight of everything that we do have. Come on, I want somebody to come full circle today and come back right to the spot where you need to be, which is grateful and thankful and enjoying the life that you have on the way to where you're going. Well, I just wish I had another job. My, you know, my, they don't appreciate me. Well, you know, you could thank God you've got one. There's somebody that would like your job. And while you're complaining about your husband, there's somebody that would take him off your hands. Some of you are thinking, well, yeah, well, let them have him. But you know what, really? He's probably not as bad as what you think he is. You're just looking at the wrong stuff. Hey, be like me. If he don't stink, thank God for that. My husband smells good. I'm really a mess, ain't I? <laughs> but it's the truth, isn't it? You can simplify your life today by just deciding, I'm going to let go of what lies behind. Come on, what's over is over. Let the dead bury the dead. You go on and be like Job and live another 140 years and enjoy the life that you've got left. Don't let one moment in time determine your destiny. The Christian life was never meant to be complicated. Jesus died. He said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. Jesus died so we could live beautiful, simple, enjoyable lives. Amen? And the last thing I'm going to say is you need to start by enjoying yourself because you're never going to enjoy your life if you don't know how to enjoy yourself. Well, I wish I was this and I wish I was that. Well, you're not. <laughs> well, I wish I didn't gain weight so easy. Well, you do. So you got to eat less and exercise more. <laughs> Amen? Amen? I've always had a little bit of a slow metabolism. I used to say I think it's in a coma. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I have, to be, I have to be really careful what I eat to stay the size that I am. And, you know, I wish I was one of those people that could just shovel it in day and night and never gain weight, but I'm not. I would have liked to have had long, thick, hair but no I have to keep mine about that long and I got to bleach it and dye it and do this and that and put I got three things on it just to make it stand up as much as it does and you know I have a daughter who gets up in the morning and I'm telling you the truth she's got this thick beautiful hair she gets up in the morning turns her head upside down shakes her head back and looks good and I'm like I can't stand you I mean, I'm one, I get up with a serious bedhead. I'm talking like with everything is over there. <laughs> Why are we always trying to impress each other? Listen, you know, I look pretty good by the time I get here, but I got to work on this. It takes a while. And you know, you can wish that you had what somebody else has got, from now until Jesus comes home. But all it's going to do is make you miserable and you're not ever going to have what they have anyway. So you need to take what you've got and do the best you can with it from today forward. Come on. Well, you know, we can all simplify our lives by just following God's Word. 
His word is for our good and it provides us with the right path to follow. We complicate our lives when we begin to rebel toward God's principles and the things that he teaches us in his word. So simplify your life, obey God. The earlier you obey God, the better and the simpler and the more powerful your life is going to be. Psalm 19, 8 says, The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure and bright, enlightening the eyes. So just make a decision if there's any area in your life where you're wrestling with God, why not just say, you know what, God, I think you're smarter than me and I'm just going to do it your way. Women in Albania are taught to be silent and not to speak out. This is something that has come from long past ago. And although many organizations uh, do advocate and do encourage women to bring it out and to um, tell the truth, it's something that has to do with the culture. If something happens to you, it's a shame factor. For some women, the Christian church is becoming a refuge, a place where they can speak freely However, less than 2% of the population are Christian, and most of them have no spiritual mothers or fathers. What I'm facing, I cannot share with my parents. They are not Christians. What I'm facing, I cannot, I do not have an adult Christian to talk to and say, is this normal, what is happening to me? Or how can I face this difficulty? Counsel is something that we lack. The first generation has just to experience everything, good or bad. And this spiritual mother for people, it's for, for the ladies and for the women, it's very important because it's somebody saying, I've gone through this way. It's painful, but you're going to make it. And this is what Joyce has been transmitting to us and giving us power to go forward. Even though there are hard times in our life, even though not everything is perfect, but we know that somebody else went through the same road, the same pain, and she made it. So we're going to make it as well. Ik heb gelijk. Die ander heeft het fout. Eén woord te veel en je hebt een knallende ruzie. En niemand heeft het gedeeld. Het kan ook anders. En ontdek nu hoe. Nu verkrijgbaar van Joyce Meyer. Leven zonder conflicten. Bestel nu het boek Leven zonder conflicten. Via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Joyce Meyer die is toch van tv? Wat doet ze nog meer? Ze schrijft boeken. Ik hou niet zo van lezen. Er zijn ook dvd's. En wat nog meer? Themaboekjes, mokken. Hé, hey, dat kan ik allemaal niet onthouden. Daarom is er de Joyce Meyer info- en productbrochure. Met een overzicht van alle boeken en dvd's. Had dat dan meteen gezegd? Die kan je online bekijken of bestellen. Kosteloos. Met alle informatie over de dagelijkse overdenkingen, Facebook, nieuwsbrief. Niet slecht. Bestel nu ook de Joyce Meyer info- en productbrochure via joyce-meyer.nl slash brochure of telefonisch via 026 20 22 100. Super.